Come on, Marty. Wait, can't you pay your power bills or what? No, nah, man, way too dark in here. <laughs> well, what? Are we gonna sit here in the dark or let's get out of here? Oh, or are you too scared I'm gonna blitz your high score? Mate, I'm not scared of the dark, right? I'm scared of you beat my high score. But you're not gonna beat my high score because that's gonna be my legacy. Uh, you know you only got a high score because I was there. You're hopeless without me, Marty. Oh, come on, Jen. I can't believe this is our last, like, few weeks before we graduate. Like, class of 1985, doesn't that spin you out? Yeah. Like, this could be our last few weeks together before we all venture off into the unknown. We can't worry about the future, Jen. We just gotta let it sort itself out. Mm -hmm. It'll be all good in the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm picking up what you're putting down, so you, you can't live your life worried. But you gotta plan for the future and make your life count, right? I mean, what are you doing after school? You just wait till our band hits a big break. We land a record deal. We'll be so famous. Our futures are going to be so bright, we're going to need shades. Make sure you don't forget about me, Big Shot. Oh, come on, Jen. Yeah, what about you, Jen? What are you doing after high school? I don't know. Study, go to college, make a difference. Are you going to tour with the band? Maybe. <laughs> but think about the big stuff, like, you know, Solving global poverty, finding a cure for AIDS, that kind of thing. Wow, you sure know how to dream big. Well, not really. I mean, the only thing stopping it from being solved today is the technology. But, you know, I heard it. They've invented this supercomputer and it's capable of incredible things. Get this. It's got 128 kilobytes of Get out of town. I know, I know. Can you play Pac-Man? Marty! Serious question. Oh, well, just think, with that kind of computing power, you know, we can solve global poverty and, and cure AIDS. Plus, there's probably going to be dozens of computers around the world. And because there's so many, it'll open up communications between nations, but it'll, it'll bring down the Berlin Wall. And we all know when that happens, we're going to have world peace. Oh, that sounds awesome, Jen. I know. Really, it does. I know. But I don't think everyone's going to go along with this whole computer really? thing. It sounds a bit geeky, if you ask me. I mean, I'm geeky. what if it's just a fade? A like, fad? Like Nike. Like Nike? Yeah, it's going to fade really? away. Really? You're yeah. going to play that? But skateboarding? Oh, now that will never die. Oh, Marty, it's always skateboarding. Marty! Dude! Did you get one of these as well? Yeah. That church is putting on those end times movies. Really? Man, I checked this out. It, it blew my mind. There was this guy, he was telling me about Jesus. And he said he loves us. And so he died on the cross for our sins. Would you believe that? And then he said, get this. This almost blew me right out. He said, that he's coming back again. Really? Yeah, man, he was so sure about it. That stuff you were talking about, the wars, the diseases, he said it's sin. That's why this world's a mess. But he's going to come back and settle the score and straighten things out. There's all going to be these signs pointing to when he comes back. Well, what kind of signs? It's going to be these wars, these rumors of wars, earthquakes, diseases. <sighs> Guys, if we don't get our lives on track, this whole planet is going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. Well, when is it going down? Look, there's one more movie on tonight. It's we not... got to go and check it out. Yeah. But we got Tom's party on tonight. And Tom. Are you serious? Nice. Uh, where, where do you guys go down there tonight? Like sandwich or something. What's going on, man? Clean up this place. Just, just go down, alright? Just... Hurry up! Take Come on, Marty. Seriously, mate, you were so slow. Marty! Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You're in grave danger, mate. Well, what is it? I can't say. My very presence here may have interrupted the space time continuum! But, Warrior, you gotta listen to me, Marty. Okay, let's listen to me carefully. <laughs> we gotta go back, Marty. We gotta go back. Back! To the future! Whoa, <laughs> Doc, you gotta explain what's going on first before we talk about the future. It's you, Marty. I come back from the future for you, for me. Your very presence is out of sight. And? Uh, and? What else, Doc? Marty, there's one possibility. Okay. In the year 2014, yep. there's a critical window of opportunity that's gonna affect the outcomes of your life. <coughs> Against my better judgment, I'm gonna take you there to show you something. Okay. But 
Oh, talk to me, dog. But what? You cannot. Must not. In fact, you will not. Tell anyone. Reveal yourself to anyone. The consequences could be a cataclysmic catastrophe. Uh, all right, all right. If anyone realized who you were, it could trigger a time paradox. Tough. Big words. Causing an infinite loop, mate. That's bad. Do you understand the immense gravity of the situation? Okay, okay. All of space and time is riding on this moment. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go. Nothing. I never 
chose any of this to happen. Well, I'm one of Audrey's. Who are you? One of Audrey's? Um, Michael. Hey, Marty. Marty, how you doing? Glad to catch you at home, mate. I was hoping you wouldn't. I don't want you coming around there anymore. No, just to check. Yeah. It's too much for me right now. Oh, look, I'm sorry you feel that way, buddy. Hey, look, I just came to ask you around for dinner, hey? I appreciate it, Chuck. But when I see your family <laughs> together in church, happily married, just makes it harder for me. Oh, come on, Marty. We've, we've, made, we've covered this ground before. It's choices. The choices we make define who we are. I just want to see you doing better, buddy. Hey, Chuck. I like what you're doing here. But I need to know what kind of choices I should have made. Wait, do we know each other? You're sort of kind of, kind of familiar. Uh, well, you don't know me, but... Look, Chuck, I'm running out of a lot of time, so if you could ex explain it. But Marty, come on mate, the fact is, the choices we made in the past, they, they make us what we are now. But the choices we make now, they're the ones that determine our future. Mate, serving Jesus is a choice, and He can change all of this for you. Do you know what I mean? Not really. Man, God's shown us how to live right, and when we choose to when we choose to ignore that and do our own thing, that's called sin. And sin has consequences, doesn't it, mate? Mate, you can't cheat on your wife and expect to have a happy marriage. You can't get involved in drugs and pornography and not expect that to take its toll on your life. You know, the Bible says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you choose to sow into your life, you'll surely reap. And if you choose sin, man, you, you don't just get decay in this life. But you get worse, the judgment of God and hell for eternity. But you guys grew up together. I mean, you were best friends. How did you keep it all together? He I... gave his life to Jesus. He wouldn't drink or smoke or swear. Wouldn't come to the pub and pick up women with me anymore. And where did that get you, Marty? It's so easy for you to say. Your life just worked out perfectly. Well, my life went down the drain. I'm over this. I'm so over it. I'm going to get another beer. Oh, Marty! I've told him so many times. How incredible Jesus is. All he has to do is repent of his sin. Start living for God. But he won't listen. If all he had to do was give his life to Jesus, it would save him from hell, why wouldn't he just do it? It's obvious, isn't it? It's so obvious. You know, our problem is that we're so full of pride. We're so full of ourselves that when we do the wrong thing, instead of copying it sweet, we make excuses and point the finger at everybody else. Man, I'm sure Marty would like to go back and change some things, eh? Yeah. I know what you mean. Look, thanks, Chuck. I really appreciate it. But I've got to go. But thanks. Speak with you. Marty, come on, man. We've been waiting for ages. Let's go. Look, Chuck, I just want to say thank you. For what, dude? Never mind. But we need to go see those Christians tonight. And we need to make our lives count. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, what happened? What changed? 
Let's just say I saw my life without Jesus. And it was dark. There's nothing in this world going to hell for. Man, I want Jesus. You're so right, man. You're so right. My name is um, Eva Brene. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few times I think I wish I could have gone back in time, but obviously we all know time machines don't exist. Um, I'll tell you one thing that does do exist, but, and I found that out probably three months ago, is um, Jesus Christ. And yeah, he's changed my life. And so there's a chapter, 2 Corinthians 5.17, that says, Any man in Christ is a new creation, and all past is gone. And beloved is new creation, and it's it's hard to believe, and it's hard to kind of get your head around that. But it's it's true, and it's Amen. it's happened. Yeah, these last three months, like I said, so um, yeah, I've, I've I've kind of grown up in church and all my life. Um, my mum and dad were, were pastors, ministers. Went over to um, pastor over in Africa, and um, yeah, so I've always been brought up in church. And um, when I was ten, my mum and dad split up, and so we came back to came back to Perth and um, ever since I can make up my own, own decisions and make my own mind up I kind of thought I don't really need church um, so mum's kept on going to church and then I kind of yeah stayed home and hang out with the mates and all that type of thing so um, she was she was left raising four kids by herself and by the time I was about 15 and a half 16 she had enough and she left and um, said you gotta find your own place or you can have this place and just start renting so yeah since 16 just been doing my own thing and all I've had was uh, my older brother as a role model kind of and so whatever he did I kind of did so he smoked I started smoking drinking um, he was a big time drug dealer so I thought yeah why not try and get into that as well um, so ever since I was 17 all the way up to up to 19 I was I was pretty hard on drugs, thought it was awesome life going out, getting into clubs, didn't have to line up, got everything for free. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is great. Um, met a girl when I was 19 and uh, she was anti-drugs, anti-alcohol. So I kind of, kind of quit all the drugs and we had a three and a half year relationship, four year relationship. Um, after about three and a half years, I thought, yeah, I, want, I like what I was doing before and it was, it was fun, so I wanted wanted to start doing that again so I slowly started doing the drugs behind her back and then eventually started doing it while she was around and um, she didn't hang around too long so she kind of left and I kind of spiralled downhill getting getting into the drugs even more um, into heavier stuff with the rock and um, going on seven day benders not sleeping seven days is it was, it was crazy stuff and um, yeah it got to a point where I, I kind of didn't know what I was doing and lost my job, um, made the mistake of leaving all my possessions at, a, at a, a, what I thought was a maiden, and lost everything I had um, and then it wasn't until I was 22 when my sister kind of brought me in and um, kind of got me off the drugs and gave me a place to stay and so I got my life back on track and got a new job and stuff and slowly started getting into the drug scene again little by bit by bit. Um, and it wasn't until just recently when my auntie had a had a baptism and she asked me to come down. So I thought, yeah, why not? I'll come down. I've been there for 14 years. Um, see, what, see what church is like these days. And so I came down to support her for a baptism. And um, yeah, it was it was. I saw a lot of a lot of familiar faces. And um, there was, at one point, Sean kind of asked me. He said, "Oh, you should come back next week. We got a concert on." And um, so I agreed to that. And then. The next week I didn't show up and I got back on the drugs again. Um, and so I kind of felt a bit bad. So the next week after that I said to Sean, look, um, I want to come down to the concert. Um, so I came down to the concert and yeah, I got, I got, wasn't that one, it was the week after I got saved at the concert and, and um, two weeks after that I got baptised and ever, ever since that day I've, I've, it's, it's an absolute blessing. Like it's, I, I can't explain it. It's, it's yeah. Um, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I, I suffer from paranoia. I couldn't go anywhere without being paranoid. Um, everyone, I always saw everyone was looking at me, trying to, I don't know, fight me or whatever. <laughs> um, and now I'm just happy. And everything's good. Work's good. Work's great. Life's great. And yeah, I, I, all I can say is I thank Jesus Christ for that. Because without Him, I, I, I don't know where I'd be today. Um, yeah, so
So yeah, um, if you're if you're out there and you're not saved, and and you know, you can kind of familiarise with my life. I, I suggest, yeah, I urge you to kind of give your life to Christ because it's it, it's absolutely awesome and you won't regret it. Thanks, guys. Woo!